Okay. Uh, so we were doing a few more questions, a few questions on partial real equations. And let us uh, try to do a few more uh, questions on the same. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, let us take a few more difficult ones first. Okay. So let us take a few more difficult ones at first and um, we'll see uh, how to solve these questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, so a question from your gate exam I'm asking, okay, in mathematics. Okay. So a little bit, uh, you can expect difficulty, but I'm there, don't worry. Okay. Uh, so the question is, so this was asked in gate exam and it was like long back, 1998 mathematics. Okay. Uh, so this will, this question will sum up your, uh, uh, like, partial equations, right? So partial equations. So question says that a non-trivial, so I told you on the very first day that uh, trivial solutions, like trivial solutions of a homogeneous differential equation will always exist. And that trivial solution would be zero. So for any homogeneous differential equation, but there is a solution that is indeed there, that is your trivially zero is always there, okay? So a non-trivial, solution of x square y double dash plus x y dash plus 4 by equal to 0 for x greater than 0 are the option number 1 which is given to you was bounded. So I'm writing BDD implies bounded and non-periodic. So obviously there are, going, okay, there are going to be four options. True, false, 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 true, true and false, true. But uh, if the false true karenge, then it's such a leaky lip. Unbounded and non-periodic. Then option number C is bounded and periodic. Okay. And option number D is uh, unbounded and periodic. And I hope I've taught you, at least not taught you, but uh, I hope you, are, you know what is periodic. So a function is said to be periodic if f of x plus t is equal to f of x for some t greater than 0, and x belongs to the domain of f. If this is a kind of uh, function it is, then I would say this function is periodic with t. And always remember that if, is, if t is the period, then all, always nt is a period. So this, because any constant multiple time positive like n times t would also be a period. So for example, sine x repeats itself. Uh, like it at 2 pi. So uh, if you replace sine of x plus 2 pi, you'll get, uh, instead of x, if you replace sine of x plus 2 pi, you'll get sine of x. So clearly you can see that your sine x is periodic with uh, period 2 pi. And uh, indeed you can write this also. Okay, but this is called as your fundamental period. The smallest of all these values are called as your fundamental period of the function. So all these uh, necessary things I've already stated. Now, given all these conditions, bounded, you know, a function is said to be bounded if f of x come on is less than or equal to some m, where m is some positive value. So if you can write your function f of x come on less than or equal to m for all x belongs to domain of f, then I'll say that my function fx is bounded on domain d. Okay, so given all these things, uh, uh, necessary things that one needs to know, these are all uh, things from your standard 11th or 12th uh, calculus classes. But uh, if, you, if you've forgotten them, so I've jotted them down here. Now, what it says, it says that a non-trivial solution for x square d2y upon dx2 plus x dy by dx plus 4y equal to 0 for all x greater than 0. Okay, are what? Periodic, bounded? Uh, so let us solve this question. So let us solve this question. So how to go about it? I already taught you that you have to see, you have to replace, uh, sorry. Okay, the entire thing by uh, this, like on using this kind of substitution, that is x is equal to e key power z, your x square, d square by would reduce to d bar into d bar minus one by. Okay, so this is what I've done here. And then you have plus d bar by, and then you have this plus four 
y is equal to 0. And if you uh, write this entire thing up, this will be like d bar square plus 4 y is equal to 0 because this d bar minus d bar y plus d bar y goes to 0. And in any case, you will write that your y as a function of z would then be equal to what? It will be equals to it will be equal to c1 cos 2 z plus c2 sine 2 z. Is that clear? Is that clear or not clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So what do you think that your function of x, if I write, it will be like c1 cosine of 2 ln x. And then you can write it as c2 sine of 2 ln x. Isn't it? And uh, x should be greater than 0, obviously. So if it is not given, then please mention. So I think mathematics uh, exam, they don't make a mistake. So if they've written x greater than 0. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, uh, what do you, what what can you assert out of this? What can you assert out of this? Uh, it clearly see they will clearly see that whatever x, uh, like uh, like for all x greater than zero, you know that your ln x belongs to R. Okay. And um, okay, so your ln x takes all the values from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So uh, it is equivalent to writing sine of theta and cos of theta only. So basically, you can say that your y of x, if I uh, if I try to uh, narrow it down, so what I can do, I can replace this by c1 square, c2 square. And uh, I can divide it by like uh, root over c1 square plus c2 square for your convenience. Okay, and uh, what you can do, uh, you can write y as a function of x, which happens to be the solution, a non-trivial solution to your above given differential equation, which is like root over c1 square plus c2 square. It's quite easy, easy to see that if you, if you write this as sine alpha, this indeed would be cos alpha. You can verify it on your own. So if this you write as sine alpha, this will become cos alpha, and simply I can write it as sine of 2 ln x plus some alpha. See, you write this stuff, I mean, this as sin alpha, this will be cosine alpha, sin alpha, cos theta, cos alpha, sin theta. So this is sin like theta plus alpha. Instead of theta, you're writing 2 x. Now, what do you think uh, this solution would be like? Is it going to be a bounded solution or non-unbounded solution? First thing, let us think about that. So uh, we knew that sin theta, you get Whatever real values you take, whatever real values you take, whatever real values you take, you know that your sine theta always lies between minus and alpha. Here also, case is the same. Instead of theta, you are supplied to ln x. And you know that for all x belongs to the domain of ln x, which happens to be x greater than zero, your ln x takes all the values from minus infinity to plus infinity. Isn't it? Takes all the values from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, uh, indeed, the yx must be a bounded function. Is that clear? And it will be bounded between minus root over c1 square plus c2 square to c1 square plus c2 square, which would require us some initial condition to determine what would be c1 and c2. Even if it's not given, you understand that sine x indeed is a bounded function. Is that clear or not clear? Should I repeat it? Alpana and Bharat. Is that clear? Why x must be a bounded function? Yes, sir. Sir, alpha kya liya aapne? Dekho, agar tum isko bolo ke sin alpha is, jaysay tum isko sin alpha bolo ke, to you can okay. verify yourself, this will be cos alpha. Like, this is a standard wealth of trick uh, to, uh, like, uh, to compact the function. So, isko yes, form me likhne ka tariqa. So, you can write it as cos, cos alpha, you can write it as sin alpha. As well. Then the formula would be cos theta minus alpha. Okay. So uh, any way around, if you want to write, you can do that. Okay. Uh, so understand that yx would be a bounded function. Is that clear to you? Because sin x to ln x plus alpha would be a bounded function because after all, instead of theta, like sin theta uh, will always lie between minus one and one where theta belongs to us. So instead of theta, you are supplied to ln x. What is wrong? Like see, for all x greater than zero, 
LNX will take all the real values from minus infinity to, and it is going on, going on. It will take all the values from minus infinity to plus infinity. Is that clear? So in any case, this is belongs to R plus again, plus alpha. So overall, this is a real value. So for all real values, sin x lies between minus one and one. So overall, your y x will lie between minus root over c one squared plus c two squared to root over c one squared plus c two squared. Is that clear to you? Now, what about periodicity? Do you see that this function is periodic? No, sir. No. Why? It would have been periodic because see. LNX me kya dikkat hai? If you supply something in multiplication, so had I replaced, had I replaced my x by x into e ki power 2 n pi, okay, and then I had taken log of it, so I'll get LNX plus 2 n pi, and then things would have certainly made sense. So if I just uh, see this thing, and even like 2 is there, so you can instead write like this also. Okay, so I'm writing if I had replaced my x by x multiplied by e to power n pi. Okay, then yes, y x e to power n pi would indeed be equal to y of x. That is very much clear. You can see that ln x ki jage aega ln x ki jage x into e to power n pi. So if you replace x e to power n pi here, so you'll get 2 ln x plus 2 n pi and psi 2 n pi plus theta, like this is entire theta. Or should I write it? I mean, so this will be like root over, so right, left hand side I'm doing, uh, sorry, this is sine and this is 2 ln x into e to power n pi plus alpha. So, uh, like this is like c1 square c2 square and this is like sine and then you have this 2 ln x plus ln e to power n pi would be n pi so n pi comes out so this is like 2 n pi plus alpha sine 2 n pi plus theta would be again sine theta is that clear but understand Whenever we have to assert that a function is periodic, we are not supposed to multiply it. Rather, we have to see that f of x plus t should be f of x. This is what we are supposed to see. We are not supposed to write that x into t, f of x into t is f of x. This is not what is required from us. So one of the hints is here itself that uh, you can one cannot do so. But what I will insist that try to uh, try to make a little bit sketch how it would be. So let us try to make a little bit of sketch of the function. Okay, and this is again uh, from my hands only. So if you have Mathematica, you can again uh, do like you can sketch it better. But whatever I can, uh, like whatever I feel, I'm going to do that. Okay, so uh, I know that closer to zero, your ln x, and uh, I'm making the graph of sine of 2 ln x. Forget about this alpha. Okay, forget about this alpha. It is only going to phase shift it. So I'm just concerned about the periodicity of sine to ln x. Okay, forget about alpha right now because we just want to see that whether sine to ln, uh, ln x is a periodic function or not. If alpha is there, fine. Like if you want to make the graph of sine to ln x, then plus alpha, it would only shift your graph from here to here. Is that clear? So uh, the, the function that needs to be uh, considered is sine to ln x. Okay, is that clear? Or not clear? Is that clear? Okay. Yes, sir. It's clear. Okay. Now, if x tends to 0, your ln x will tend towards minus infinity, isn't it? And what will happen to sine? Now, sine is having an input which is going towards infinity. Okay. And sine in this case will be an oscillating function. Oscillate, it will give you an oscillating result between minus 1 and so it will be nothing but it, it will be an oscillating result between minus 1 and 1. So it will be an oscillating number between minus 1 and 1. Certainly you cannot write one number. To it. So there, you can say that your limit will not be unique. But rather it will be a non-unique limit oscillating indefinitely between minus 1 to plus 1. Is that clear? And little bit of understanding that if I want to make the graph of sin x, this would be like this. If I want to make 
the graph of sine two x, it will be like this. Sine four x will wiggle more, and if I have a sine tending to infinity, it will wiggle very indefinitely. Is that clear? देखो अगर तुम साइन एक्स का ग्राफ बनाते हो तो क्या होगा इट विल बी लाइक दिस वे अगर तुम साइन टू एक्स का बनाते हो तो इंस्टेड ऑफ पाए नाउ इट अचीव जीरो between minus 1 and 1 so there would be an oscillating limit between minus uh, like it will be oscillating limit between minus 1 and 1 and these uh, oscillations would be very rapid is that clear and the, what is the significant thing that you can find that uh, like a significant number that you can say where it will become zero so it will become zero at x equal to e pi i don't know which way it will come but just for an understanding i assume that this will be it because we want to just have an understanding so at e ki power pi it will be zero or instead i'll write at e ki power pi by 2 it would be zero because if you write e ki power pi by 2 here so e ki power pi by 2 uh, ln e ki power pi by 2 will give you pi by 2 2 into pi by 2 will give you pi, uh, pi sin pi is zero is that clear and then again it will rise now here it has no problem but at around zero it will certainly have a problem so in the neighborhood of this is what is i'm making in the neighborhood of x equal to zero plus that is on the right hand side of the neighborhood of x equal to zero plus there will be some rapid oscillation then somehow it will go on i don't know that whether it will go from here like it will come from above to below for that i need derivatives uh, but right now just a rough idea i'm making i'm making a rough idea of the graph okay again this will be like e ki power pi is that clear and then again there will be i think this will be like e ki power 3 pi by 2 it will be like e ki power pi and so on is that clear or not clear these roots are clear i mean these roots would are clear e ki power i'm just trying to like i cannot write a regress proof to it uh, but just an understanding i'm trying to develop I'm just I'm trying to develop just an understanding. Is that clear or not? So at x equal to e to power pi by two, I know that my function would be zero. At x equal to e to power pi, again my function would be zero. At x equal to three pi by two, again my function would be zero. And I think this is quite clear. Is that clear or not clear? Ah, uh, three pi by two. I think this would be some e to power two pi, right? Yes, sir. This will be the key part of it, and the rest follows. Now my question is that forget about this zone. Do you see? Forget about this zone. Look, forget about the neighborhood of x equal to zero plus. Do you see that function is periodic, or you can say that whether the function is eventually periodic? So eventually periodic means forget about this. But lately, if you can see that, is that do you see that your function is eventually periodic? Yes. Sir. Okay, the answer would be no. Okay, why? Uh, for the function to be periodic, what do you want to see? You want to see that. Let's say if I say that my sine x is periodic, what does it mean? It means that this this pattern is completely repeated after after uh, the you can say line. Uh, you can say that if I make a linear translation, this will be like. This entire pattern is repeated over here, and this entire pattern it is repeated by two pi. So if I replace x plus two pi, I'll get the same pattern here. Then again, if I replace x equal to x plus two pi, I will again see a repetition of the same pattern. Is that clear or not? So what one needs to see is uh, whether this pattern is getting repeated at constant intervals, like. देखो ये पैटर्न यहां से यहां तक इसमें था इट वॉज एन दिस पैटर्न वॉज इंटैक्ट इन टू पाए दिस अगेन पैटर्न इज इंटैक्ट इन टू पाए एंड सोन सुपू इफ यू सी 
So what one needs to see is that let's say if I want if forget about all these things, if I see that this pattern what I'm seeing is a periodic one, then it implies that this particular distance must be equal to this particular distance. Uh, are you getting my point or not getting my point? This will be like e ki power 5 pi by 2 meter. If you understand it, if periodic, hai, then this entire pattern should be repeated all over again here also. But this distance must be equal to this distance. Only then I will say that this is this pattern is exactly this pattern, isn't it? If this distance is more, then this will be like a lot of time. Is that clear? It is a person who is like this, but I am just trying to make a point. If I say that sin x is periodic, hai, what does it mean? Okay, this pattern from 0 to 2 pi would be equal to the pattern from 2 pi to 4 pi. Isn't it? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, let us uh, let us try to see. So if this is the case, then what does it imply? It implies that e to power 3 pi by 2 minus e to power pi by 2 must be equal to e to power, uh, I think, 5 pi by 2 minus e to power 3 pi by 2. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And I think if I'm not wrong, this will be like a... Uh, um, what I can do is, uh, if I replace e to power pi by 2 here, so what I'll get, I'll simply get e to power pi minus 1. And if I replace e to power uh, 3 pi by 2 here, I will get e to power pi minus 1. Is that clear? So yes, if, if these distances, let's say this I'm writing as d1, and this distance I'm writing d2, if they are equal and subsequently you can prove for the same, like you can go all over again. So just, just a breaking of a symmetry pattern here itself will break this uh, periodicity, isn't it? I've already, um, I'm not already not taking this particular thing. So in exam, you will instantly say that this is a non-periodic function. Okay. But just for your sake, I'm just trying to uh, uh, take it further. I'm saying that, is there a possibility that function would attain some periodicity after a while? Like, it was instantly clear here itself that in the neighborhood of x equal to zero, your function will wiggle indefinitely from minus infinity to plus infinity, is uh, minus one to plus. Infinity. Okay, uh, so instantly you would have marked the answer bounded and non-periodic. But um, just just for your sake, I have uh, plotted this graph, and since it see mere hands se bana hai, but it will not be this way. This particular distance would be more than this particular distance. Okay, this is what I want to suggest, and this is just a vague idea. I need to write a very concrete proof to it and that concrete proof would require me intermediate value property right now here which you are not quite aware of and probably of much of uh, number theory which i'm not having any sort of expertise so for long while i've been doing this problem this way uh, so just to make an association okay so kya kia, uh, this will get cancelled so if d1 equals to d2 then this will be the case so if if any way if i want to say that my function is periodic in like this particular pattern is getting repeated this way. So if it is periodic, then this particular distance should be equal to this particular distance, isn't it? And if this is the case, then what, what you are getting, you are getting e power pi by 2 is equal to e power 3 pi by 2, which can never be the case since you know that your exponential is a 1, 1 function. If exponential is a 1, 1 function, then e power x1 equals to e power x2 necessarily implies your x1 has to be x2 which indeed you can see is not the case. So here you have at a contradiction. Therefore, you can see that not even your function is eventually periodic. Is that clear? So answer to this problem would be, uh, I think bounded, but non-periodic. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, so uh, I hope uh, all these things are quite clear. Uh, uh, okay, now, uh, sir, I'm sir yeah, e to the power n pi se apne multiply. Uh, you have blocked some uh, ask Harry. E to the power n pi uh, se sir. multiply. Uh -huh. Deekho, just to show yes, you sir. that instead of x plus t pi, you are uh, getting sort of a periodic pattern if you multiply x into e to the power n pi. So, if you have a question like this, but if you have a question in physics, 
and if they have written, they had written that if I make a transformation x is equal to x e to power n pi, then your function is invariant with respect to such trans uh, such uh, transformation. Well, because physics may you are going to use such kind of language okay. invariance. So, if there is a question in physics, then it will say that the function is invariant with respect to the uh, with respect to the transformation x yeah. equal to x e to power n pi. So, if you use this kind of transformation, you'll find that your y x is uh, some uh, is preserving this uh, uh, transformation. Okay, sir. So, you must have to me just my observation that I'm telling. You. Is that clear? Uh, yes, graph, uh, if you have Mathematica, you try to make this graph. You, I, I, I don't know exactly how it will be made, but like, this is what I feel that this will be like this only. Uh, you may have a problem with probably uh, how it enters. It may be possible that it comes from here, but right now I have made it from here. Uh, if you are not, if you think that how to check it, you can simply take limit at e to power pi by 2 left and right. The light, agar right hand limit negative, aati, then it is coming from here. Or agar, are you getting my point? Is the reason. If you have e to the power pi by 2 plus h, and if you have limit negative, aati, that implies ye jo tumne bhi graph, na, graph that I have made will be uh, having an inversion. But overall, uh, the, just to make you understand that this will not have a eventual periodic pattern as well. Uh, I have done this kind of discussion. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so I think I should sum up my class here. But uh, tomorrow we are going to do a method of uh, variation of parameters. And I think that will sum up your uh, entire basic uh, differential equation. Yes. Okay. And then we'll move on electrostatics to something called as multipole expansion. Okay. So that requires you uh, a, a, a know how of generating function for Legendre's polynomial. Uh, so we'll discuss. A few of classes on legendary polynomials before uh, progressing to the uh, multiple expansion thing. Okay. And if you find any sort of doubt, you kindly let me know. So uh, today's doubt was good. Achha, ek question karte hai, isi baat pe. Let us do one more question. Again, it was asked in net exam. Yeah, let me find the question. I knew that there was a question. A question karte hai, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll end this session. Uh, there was a question in net exam only. Just give me a minute. I think or somewhere. Just give me a year. Okay. So the question was asked in June attempt 2018. And it says that uh, because uh, you asked a question of the same like kind of stuff you asked me. So therefore, 1 upon x and you have this dx by dt ka whole square. And then you have minus dx by dt equal to 0 with boundary condition x0 is equal to 0 and x1 is equal to 1. Then one needs to find the value at x2. Then one needs to find the value at x2. So how to do this question? How to do this question? So just observe the pattern. Not Don't go by any... Because uh, x square bhi karoge. If you multiply with x square also, this is a hurdle. Like dx by dt ka square there. So one thing can be you either write dx by dt as some p or something and try to develop some pattern from here. One one can one thing can be this. So uh, let me try this. And if does it doesn't work that way, then we'll see another. Uh, so this will be like dp by dt here. And this will be like achha, one upon x be there. So it will not work. It will not work here. So what to do, what to do, what to do. Just take a few minutes. And if you are not able to solve, then I'll, I'll solve it for you. So dx by dt equal to p would work, would have worked, but uh, this, this term is here. So 1 upon x is here. So you cannot do much of it. So you have to uh, make certain uh, manipulation in order to get the answer. You have to make certain manipulation. Uh, so what I can write, I can write this term as d by dt. And I can write it as uh, dx by dt. Okay. And uh, what I can do is if I take x here by 2. So this is like this plus this is 1 upon x. 
okay so it means that there would be some repetition for uh, x like uh, there would be some repetition of x only right dekho x uh, jab bhi kabhi dx by dt ka square dikh raha it implies what it implies what ki there is some x involved and you are differentiating with respect to t so that will give you this term dx by dt so uh, let us make a guess work first and uh, let's see if that works out and if it does not work out then i'll see this question tomorrow but uh, this is what i feel uh, let me just uh, first find uh, let me just first find what will be uh, d by dt of x dx by dt why i'm doing this because see this term uh, like this term forget one upon x this term would be created only if i use this kind of thing um and uh, ek kaam karte hain um uh, what i should do acha samajh maange what i should do ek kaam karte hain so so what i will do uh, multiply this <clears throat> above equation so i'll write multiply the above equation the above differential equation by x so if you multiply the above differential equation by x you are getting x d2 x upon dt square and then you are getting plus <clears throat> sorry dx by dt ka whole square and then you are getting minus dx by dt whole square is that clear minus x dx by dt equal to zero now uh, uh, just think about this so if i use d by dt of x dx by dt will i not get the first two term see uh, if i differentiate with respect to t x dx by dt will i not yes. get this term so like if you see x the, the derivative of x will be dx by dt and dx by dt to dx by dt will be dx by dt ka square and this is x d2 x upon dt square minus x dx by dt is equal to zero so in clearly you can see that your x dx by dt would be equals to t plus constant of integration because this is like if you replace this by a variable b so this will be like dv by dt माइनस वी इक्वल टू जीरो प्लेस बी देर अच्छा बी है तो एल एन हो जाएगा इन दैट केस सॉरी इसको ढंग से कर लेते हैं जल्दीबाजी नहीं करते हैं सो इफ आई रिप्लेस माय एक्स डी एक्स बाई डी टी बाय वी एस वी व्हाट आई विल गेट आई विल गेट डी वी बाई डी टी माइनस बी इक्वल टू जीरो इज दैट क्लियर यस ओके एंड व्हाट आई विल गेट फ्रॉम हियर आई विल गेट एल एन बी is equal to t plus c and then i can write v which is your uh, x dx by dt as t uh, sorry as k into e ki power t you take exponential on both sides and v is given by dx by dt so x dx by dt is equal to k into e ki power t okay and i hope there are some hints given okay acha the hints are given on uh, not on the derivative but on the values so i will have to somehow uh, integrate this integrate this so integral will be x square by 2 k k1 e to the power t plus k2 now you can use the hints that at t equal to 0 your x was given as 0 so at t equal to 0 your x was 0 so if this is the case then your x square by 2 is equals to k1 e to the power t minus k1 So K two is minus K. Okay, and the other hint is at x equal to, at t equal to one, your x is equal to one. At t equal to one, your x is equal to one. At t equal to one, your x is equal to one. So your K one minus K two is equal to one upon two. Uh, uh, K one e minus K two e is one by two, right? अच्छा k1 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 e minus 1 so your k1 is equal to kya ho jayega 1 upon 2 e minus 1 right aise kuch hona chahiye k1 should be equal to 1 upon 2 e minus 1 yes is that clear and uh, if you write your x as a function of t it will be plus and minus uh, but the options given in the exam were corresponding to plus only so i'll take the plus sign only uh, because options were given that way so xt would be 2 times k1 e to the power t minus 1 and then i'm writing root over here is that clear so 2 there take k1 common of e to the power t minus 1 and instead of k1 you can write uh 1 upon 2 so it will be like root over e to the power t minus 
divided by e minus one. Now what they are asking is they are asking what will be x two. So x two will be equal to root over e square minus one divided by e minus one, and this will give you root over I think e plus one. So the options that were given in the exam were all positive. So I'm using the positive value. Okay. And why it is given positive? Because if there are plus and minus, then a function will attain two values at the same point. So that cannot be the case. That cannot be the case. So whatever given hints I have in the exam, so accordingly I'm reading. So if I had this negative sign, then this will not satisfy my initial conditions also. Okay. So if I take a negative sign also, like if I take plus minus, then it will not satisfy my initial conditions also. Is that clear? Because my initial conditions are both possible. So if you use x one equal to one also, you'll find that if I use a negative sign, this will not yield me the right answer. Okay. If I use a t equal to one, if I replace this will be like e minus one upon e minus one, this will get cancelled. It will come out as one. And if there are plus and minus, minus has to be rejected because that will give you x equal to minus. So x as a function of t at t equal to uh, two would be equals to what I think. It will be equal to root of e plus. I hope it is clear. So much of the course we have done, um, probably it will take tomorrow's class, and then we'll be doing Legendre's differential equation. Okay, because Legendre's differential equation is quite important. And once we are done with that, then we're going to revise this ordinary differential equations, uh, keeping in mind physics. Okay, so that will take around two to three lectures, and then uh, I'll also explain you all those things. Which I have not explained right now. Like I have not went. I did not go into the derivation part. Why did I derive this Cauchy-Lie equation? Because I want you people not to remember this result. Even if you forget this result, I don't think if you are aware with whatever I have done right now, then you will be able to do it on your own also. The karna kya? X equal to e ki part z to lena. Then a few choti si wo twelfth class wale maths lagani hai. Ki wo d by dx kare d by dz likhna and dz by dx likhna to. I think if you forget also, then also you are convenient enough in the exam. So this is what I want. Is that clear? Alpna, yes, is that clear? Bharat, is that clear? Hello. Okay, ji. So I'm ending the session. I'll meet you tomorrow. Sir, sir. Ah, ha, bolu, bolu. Sir, जो हमने लेप्लास इक्वेशन की सॉल्यूशन निकाली थी ना स्पीयर वाली, जिसमें हम इनसाइड और आउटसाइड लेते थे अलग-अलग उसमें. उसमें हमने एक केस लिया था जिसमें एक्सटर्नल इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड अप्लाई की थी स्पीयर पे जिसकी वजह से इंड्यूस चार्ज आ गए थे और एक टर्म आ रही थी दूसरा सर उसमें उस उस केस में स्पीयर के अंदर भी लप्लास इक्वेशन वैलिड रहेगी क्या लप्लास इक्वेशन अंदर मतलब जहाँ पे हमारे इंड्यूस चार्ज because usually uh, what is asked or what is actually uh, what, what we actually uh, think uh, is about potential outside only. So probably uh, because of the induced charges, we may not be able to apply, but uh, let me check and tell you the right thing. Okay, sir. Okay. And I already published an errata video to that, right? So if yeah, you yeah, see yeah. both Griffith one, uh, which you had an inquiry and the other one also. I'll, I'll yes, see sir, and reply. Okay. I'll see and reply. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Bye.